Ever seen Sears? Summer is here, and what better way to enjoy the outdoors than to pick up a bat and smash a few homers? Ugh. You're out. We're going to show you the ropes on how to carve your very own baseball bat using one continuous toolpath on your Vortex rotary axis, and then level it up with a sick laser beam engraved design. Let's play ball. Oh, I'm so not a baseball player. That was awkward to watch. It's been a while since I had a confession to make, so what better time and place than right here in cottage country? This is a tutorial about continuous carving a baseball bat, and we are going to show you how to do it. However, I did make one eensy weensy tiny mistake when I was planning this entire project out. I got my files set up, I did my tests, I cut down that big slab of wood, I packed up all the stuff that I was going to need for cottage country, I drove up north, I unpacked everything, and as soon as I walked through the door of the trailer where I keep the long mill when I'm not carving, it hit me. I do not have a 48 by 30 long mill in the world's tiniest workshop. No, no. I have a 30 by 30. A bat is 32 to 34 inches long. If you're as good at math as I am, you'll quickly realize that those numbers do not compute. This wasn't a scottable. This was just a straight up oversight screw up mistake. So I called a meeting of the minds and explained my self-imposed stupidity to the team. The good news in all of this is that I did take footage of my test bat back in the shop. It's not, you know, B-roll visual level quality stuff that we typically have, and I will admit I'm pretty disappointed in that. I like the little montages in each video, but we all agreed that while this was incredibly unfortunate, it would not be worth carving a miniature version of the bat just for the sake of some sexy looking b-roll. The meat and the potatoes of this tutorial doesn't change, just the artsy fartsy. Knowing all that, thank you for listening, and it's time to get to the actual tutorial. The whole point of these videos is to make CNCing more accessible. So that's why we're showing you the continuous toolpath method. You could set this project up just like the Vortex Skull video we did, replace the Skull STL with the bat that we're gonna provide you, and you basically get the same result that we will with the continuous toolpath. However, there are times when the continuous toolpath can be faster and slower, and there are times when the bit cutting direction can be a deciding factor on your toolpath. For instance, when say the toolpath cutting direction changes between climb and conventional and causes the project to jump to the point where it snaps the giant wand you're attempting to make right in the middle of the carve. Go ahead, ask me how I know that can happen. We are all about expanding your knowledge base. So at the end of the day, if you've got another tool in your CNC toolbox, we think that's a good thing. Now that you understand that, let's get this game started. I felt the need to give a warning right about here in the video. If you plan to level this project up and laser engrave something after you've carved your bat, I highly suggest you go and watch the Cottage Country CNC coaster video I did last summer. In order to laser engrave your bat, you're going to need to know the offset distances between your router and your laser. Doing this before you start carving your bat will save you some time and a little aggravation in the long run. I'll drop the link in the description below to all the videos that I'm referencing in this video. The first thing I had to do was to choose a piece of wood. I will not pretend that I know a ton about baseball, so I hit up Google to see what kind of wood is the most popular for bats. As it turns out, maple is used for approximately 70% of the bats in the major leagues. It just so happens I had a hunch that that was the case the last time I was buying supplies, so I picked up this serious chunk of hard maple. It's huge. It's pretty obvious I cut this back at the shop versus in cottage country. The world's smallest workshop can only check so many boxes, and I needed a table saw for this job. I cut it down to 36 by 2.75 by 2.75 which are typical back spat dimensions, which leaves me room on both ends and enough meat to rotary surface this club. It doesn't matter which you do first, create your design files or rotary surface your material, so I'm gonna dive into VCAR first. As always, we're going to give you the VCAR files to open and use, but if you're using a different software, or you just want to try making the file from scratch, we're going to give you the bat STL model also. You can find the project file links in the description below. So that's what I'm doing here. Setting up the file. Yeah. 
importing the BAT model and getting it scaled properly. Then I added some 3D tabs. I changed their size to something more beefy to hold the bat in place while it was carving. That's all the standard stuff for setting up a rotary file. Now let's get to the continuous carve part of things. Go up to your gadgets toolbar, select wrapping, then spiral layout. There are lots of, you know, options looking in here, but it's not that bad. We're basically going to create a toolpath to wrap around the 3D model you've just imported. There are only two settings we need to touch here right now. First one, number of starts or strands. We want just one. That was easy. Second, select spacing between strands. All we're doing with this number is creating the step over for our bit, just like you would with any other bit with a 3D toolpath. I'm using the CNC quarter inch ball nose bit for this project. Typical step over for a nice finished surface on something is about 10%. So multiply your bit diameter by your step over to get the spacing between the strands number. In my case, 0.25 inch bit diameter multiplied by 10% step over equals 0.025 inches strand spacing or step over. The rest of the settings aren't needed for the purpose of this tutorial, so we'll leave them as is. Once you click OK, a prompt will pop up telling you that it's calculated 1439 revolutions for the size of the project you've told it. That's what this line is here. That's the new path it created based on the values we just input. Now just select that new spiral toolpath and create a profile toolpath. The instructions in the spiral layout told us to set the depth to zero. Like I said, quarter inch ball nose, eighth of an inch depth of cut, 100, 150 ish inches per minute and 50 inches per minute for the plunge. Add your ramps of a quarter inch. And here's the super important part of this toolpath. Project toolpath onto 3D model, check. Otherwise that spiral toolpath that was just created won't wrap around the 3D model in the file. Might take a few seconds to finish calculating this toolpath, so be patient. Let's have a look at what we got now. Boom, hit stick, ready to go. Make sure you save your G-code file with the Vortex A-axis post processor and it's time to rotary surface this slugger. Again, I'll refer back to the skull and chest piece tutorials for all the info you need to know in order to rotary surface your material. Rotary surfacing is pretty simple with G-Center's built-in tools. Go to your rotary tab, then rotary surfacing. Set your material length, your start and final diameter. In my case, it starts at 2.75 and will end up at 2.65, knowing that my model will take it down to 2.5. Step down as good as is. Bit diameter equals quarter inch. Step over equals 20%. You can make this more or less depending on how much time you want to save versus how fine a surface you want to start from. Spindle rate of 17,000 RPMs and a feed rate of 120 inches per minute should move this pretty quick. Generate G-code, then run it on the main visualizer and we can move to the next step. Grab your chunk of wood, draw some X's on both ends to help you line it up, put some screws in the work holding faceplate and load your material into your vortex. Tighten everything down, zero your bit and let's get surfacing. I thought a little ahead and I'm going to use the same bit for surfacing as we will for the final carve. Let's run the G-code file we saved and sit back and watch the bat chips fly. Gonna lie, this thing looks pretty stunning right off the CNC. If you're happy at this point with your Louisville lumber, grab some friends and a ball, go take a few swings with your latest carving. If, however, you want to be the coolest kid on the diamond, this is where level two is gonna kick in. Let's use our laser beam to engrave a custom design. You can choose whatever design you'd like, so I'm just gonna jump into the how part of it. First, let's get the rotary part of the file setup done. Laser tool up at the top, rotary setup. We're using a chuck rotary type, so check that on. Enable rotary, checked on. The rotary axis is the Y. The millimeters per rotation took me a few tries to dial in. I poked around online to see if there was anyone else that had a quick answer, and I didn't find one. At least not one that I understood. I'm fairly certain there is someone watching who can explain the theory behind the proper way to calculate this. So if that person is you, feel free to chime in down below in the comments. As for me, I just went to my good old buddy, test, error, measure, and tweak. You can see that my millimeters per rotation is set to 40, but I wanna make sure that that translates to my design being the correct dimensions that it's supposed to be as well. So the way I'm going to do that is by drawing a shape 
and having a known dimension on it. So I'm gonna place it at zero, zero. You can place it wherever you'd like, but the known dimension is gonna be that three inch dimension so that I can then measure after I've run the file. So I've made my three inch rectangle. Now I am going to save my G code and I'm gonna go burn that on my material and measure it. Now that I've measured it, it wasn't three inches. So I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna tinker with that millimeters per rotation to make sure that I get that three inch rectangle where it's supposed to be. It's still three inches. I'm gonna save my G code. I'm gonna run the file and measure again and we'll see what we get. So that's how I ended up with 37.5 millimeters per rotation. You may have to tinker, but at least you'll understand how to tinker now. My object diameter is 2.5, that one was easy enough. And it automatically calculated the circumference to 7.85, blah, 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 blah. Beauty. Let's import the design now. I'm gonna use this cute little pickle cut in a pickle. Seems fitting for what we're working on. I'm scaling it to approximately 1.65 inches tall. It will fit on the face of the bat without too much distortion. My layer settings for the little pickle are 25 millimeters a second for my speed. Max power is 100. Mode is set to image. Line interval is 0 0.05. And the image mode is good old robot Jarvis. I am, of course, the world's largest smarty pants, so I'm going to add a little texty fun something to this. Settings on that text layer are speed of 25 millimeters a second. Max power is 100. The mode is now fill, and the line interval is 0.1. Lines per inches is 254. Select the design and text and let's preview this fella. About 13 minutes is totally reasonable for me. Save your light burn file and let's go set up the machine. In order to actually engrave the design, we have to offset the laser on the Y axis. The trouble is the Y axis is currently locked in place because Y and A switch when you're using rotary the way we are set up. For the time being, we'll just have to move that Y offset manually. With the new SLB and some tweaks to your vortex, you could run true X, Y, Z, A fourth axis projects, but for the majority of us who don't have that in place, this is a relatively easy workaround. Here is the process I found that works to get laser beam offset. Carve whatever you're carving in rotary mode. In this case, it's a bat. Switch to regular carving XYZ mode. That means to toggle your manual Y and A switch and to move the slider in G sender. Move your machine on X or Y, the distances you found after watching the coaster video on how to figure out your offset distances. Zero X and Y. Flip the manual Y A toggle to rotary mode and move the slider to rotary mode in G-Sender. Move your X axis to the desired location for engraving. Zero your X. Attach your laser beam to your long mill, connect the appropriate wires and remove the bit in the router. Place a small piece of scrap on the workpiece and set the proper Z height using the spacers provided with your laser beam. Zero your Z. Test fire the laser to focus it properly. Measure the thickness of the piece of scrap you used to test on and offset Z down by that dimension. Re-zero Z. If you want your design to fall on a specific part of what you are carving, rotate your A axis to that spot and zero. Load your laser beam file and fire away. And there you have it, one baseball bat carved with your vortex and then customized with your laser beam. I don't know about you, but I feel like if I strolled up to home plate with a custom bat in hand, the other team might think I was, you know, way better than I actually am. As always, thanks for stopping by and spending some time with us. We absolutely love making these videos for you guys, so hopefully you find them helpful. Don't forget that we've got all your CNC parts and accessories available on our web store, cnc.com. If you've got any questions or comments, please drop us a line down below. We've got a ton of things going on these days, but we always carve out some time for the comments. Until the next episode of Cottage Country CNC, we'll see you around the CNC.